tonight a straightforward install of Nikivo version 10. It's a backup product for my VMs in my vSphere environment here. And I'm going to install it on my always on server, that 12 core system that I'm currently recording the video on in a Windows 10 VM. So anyhow, uh, here's the summary of the system. Fine. And we're going to have to put it on a day store where we have space. So let's just right click and say deploy, uh, deploy OVF template. Okay, we've got the OVA selected. The name is uh, not great because I could be upgrading it. But for the purposes of the demo video, it's not bad because it's very informative and visual. So I guess I'll leave it alone. But yeah, let's say it goes to 11 someday. Well, then I want to rename the VM. And then the underlying folder is the old name. A little bit weird, but it's all right. Let's move along. Normally, I start with a host name as well. So I might want to rename the appliance, and that's fine. So it's doing a bit of validation, looking around at data stores and so forth. And here we go. So let's go with a data store that has space and is reasonably performant. So a SATA SSD will do the trick. And I tend to go with thin provisions since it's an SSD. It's actually an article by John Nicholson out today about provisioning. All right, source network is irrelevant. That's interesting, the template. But I'm going to put it on my VM network. Sounds good to me. Uh, it actually says static. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. DHCP does its thing in previous releases, from what I remember. So anyhow, now it's shoving the bits over the wire. And um, we should actually be able to see my VM pushing out those bits. Not a particularly fast. There we go. Getting some decent speed now. So the OVA appliance is now being deployed. Okay, that wasn't bad at all. Um, right there, you'll see it took uh, well under two minutes. So we now have ourselves a VM on here. And you remember I said I'd want to auto start it? So I like to do that real early on before I forget. And move it to my auto start list. All right. So here's the VM. It doesn't power it on for us or anything, nor should it. I can go ahead and show you a console. It's not going to be too exciting to look at locally. Basically, it's intended for us to point our browser at it. And you'll see it says URL server IP colon 4443. So it's a little bit unusual, but we'll need to use that to get started. So like most appliances, you get a little, um, let's get rid of the other stuff. You get a little bit of guidance. All right, there it is. It tells us right there. Dot 227. Okay. So. We can give it a name, um, but let's just go with, uh, let's go with that. Let's not use the local UI for anything and go with exactly what it tells us to and see how it goes. Bypass Chrome warning on certificate. Ta -da. So it's that easy to get Nikivo initially installed. Now with the configuration, you'll see that's also quite straightforward. Notice it says the word starting. So got to wait a little longer. The uh, embedded browser and um, web server is not ready yet. Can't resist peeking at these things here under networking. So it is DHCP. 
and it does have a name. So that's interesting. But I'm going to start with um, this UI and see if we can get it to show something here. All right, creating an account. Let's think about email. So if you wanted to alert you and all that, you want to use the legit email. So that's fine. So we're creating an account. LastPass offer to save my login. Sure. And now we're on the initial configuration. So I do wish, kind of wish I had a name here, right? I like to point to my backup appliance with a name. Um, so remember, we have this back door in where presumably we can type something. But that might break the appliance. Don't know. We've got documentation at helpcenter.kivo.com. All right, let's do it. So if we give it a host name on Akivo, it should actually be akivo.lab.local is my fully qualified host name. Hit escape, and it's done. All right. So .227 needs to be given that host name in my DNS. So I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to do that. Okay, we're right on the leases page. So remember, we're on 227 is my IP. Map it. Instead of VA, which is what it was called, we can do Nikivo. Ow. All right. From our previous deployment. And there it is. Gosh, <laughs> the delete button's missing. All right, let's just work around this. Let's start over. Here's our MAC address for 227. We've got a Nikivo. Now it's letting me delete it. That was weird. Okay, wait for the spinning to finish. Get that lease in there. Map. Save. And now we have ourselves the ability to log in with the name. Fully qualified, so it'll work even over a VPN. Ouch. So we just busted the appliance. Or not. All right, we're good. All right, it's working out quite well. So we can actually do things like make a shortcut for it and clean up the URL. All right, great, I feel better. <laughs> it worked. And now we just add new vCenter hosts. All right, what's my vCenter called? It's right there. It's called vcsa.lab.local. Okay, so now it should be logging into my vCenter here. Wait for it, wait for it. That's a good sign. So yeah, I like the cleanness of being able to add the host name like that. I didn't even have to reboot it. That was pretty slick. Um, your lab may vary, of course, how you handle DNS. Um, but yeah, you get the idea. I'm not a fan of using IPs whenever I can avoid them. I do. Okay, a transporter, it talks about if you want to add more. We can just say we got it. There's an onboard transporter already. Okay, we have no backups and 486 gig free. So I don't need to add another one at this time. I can go ahead and finish. 
And there you have it. We're ready to create our first job. Notice there were some new options that in there, including a replication job. All right, I'm going to back up my cyber power uh, appliance here, which is my UPS. It's part of my infrastructure of stuff I use and auto start with my machine. Some of these other ones are rather large. I just want to get a quick test backup done here. So you'll notice it's showing the entire cluster. This is pretty nifty. And um, yeah, let's move along. Do I need any advanced options? Let's skip them for now and keep this video simple. It's going to run it every day at UTC 5. OK. Can leave that alone if we'd like. Keep 10 recovery points to default. Now the job name VMware Backup, I only pointed to one. You could do something like that. And finish and run. Well, that's a little weird, but yeah. We just have one VM in there. So yeah, you might have, um, well, you may handle that differently. Um, so it's already cruising and it's going very fast. You'll see it's just taking snapshot and preparing for data transfer. This is a live VM. It looks like the UI has been updated a little bit since I last ran this uh, on V9. So here we are in V10. That's fully vSphere compatible. And I do want to point out that I have an article about that right there. So yeah, vSphere 7 compatibility stated right there in the product. Um, not just works with it, but tested and fully supported with vSphere 7. And that's part of the point here. I'm running on a vSphere 7 cluster. So this is going pretty well. Um, you'll see I have other demos where I do things like a full restore. Um, basically, you test hydrate backups. All that stuff's been covered. This video is really just a getting started with v10 video, the basics. And um, with a little bit of frills in that, I changed the host name. Nice. We have this little uh, kind of tachometer display, how many megabytes per second we're actually getting. Now that the snapshot's done and it's doing some work, we're at a minute and 15 seconds in, 75 seconds, and 68% or over two thirds the way done with the whole job. Scroll down here a little bit, you can see it shows the events. It mentions that the VM is actually running, that we're backing up. And if you were to have a support issue, you'd actually click right here to open a support ticket. It's that simple. I like the histogram idea where you can see there was zero data transfer that first minute as we're preparing, or less than a minute. And now I'm thinking um, it plateaued here. So it transferred two gig of data, and now it's just finishing up with whatever housekeeping it's got to do to the uh, internal database um, to have the job show as complete. When it's finished, can't resist clicking on the green dot over the left, but let me just not click on anything until this is done. Very nice display. It even tells me it's in the middle of completing the job, so there's not much to show in a graph. And we're completed. Very nice. So that went well. Uh, the red dot went away because that was showing a activity that was happening. All right. If we click on that, tells us all about it. We could do it again if we wanted. Finally, we've got some calendaring functions to show all the jobs. And there you go. Uh, we can search through backups and we can dive more into settings, including email notification to let myself know when a backup is done. So there you have it. Let's head back to the dashboard. And um, that'll be it for tonight. Got a big day tomorrow presenting to a VMUG, and now I got one more product working in my vCR7 lab. Hopefully, you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com. And bye for now.